and ch. The English language has gone through a lot of spelling changes in the past 500 years. Perhaps that is why different letter combinations can stand for the same sound. In today's lesson, you'll learn about CH and TCH, which both stand for the sound CH. We will be working with the sound CH, as in, in the words chop or pitch. Listen for the CH sound at the beginning of the following words. Chip, ch, i, p, chip. Chin, ch, i, n, chin. Chick, ch, i, k, chick. Now, listen for the ch sound at the end of the following words. Inch, i, n, ch, inch. Hatch. Hatch, hatch. Rich, r, i, ch, rich. I will say a few words. Repeat the words after I say them. If you hear the ch sound at the beginning of the word, give a thumbs up. If you hear the ch sound at the end of the word, give a thumbs down. If you do not hear the ch sound, Cross your fingers to make an X. The first word is chair. Thumbs up, thumbs down, or do you cross your fingers to make an X? Chair. If you gave a thumbs up, you are correct. You hear the ch sound at the beginning of the word chair. The next word is shrimp. Thumbs up, thumbs down, or should you cross your fingers to make an X? Shrimp. If you crossed your fingers, you are correct. You do not hear the ch sound in the word shrimp. The last word is peach. Thumbs up. Thumbs down, or do you cross your fingers to make an X? If you said thumbs down, you are correct. You hear the ch sound at the end of the word peach. Let's go back to the words chair and shrimp. Sometimes the ch sound and the sh sound can be easily confused. Do you have any idea why? Say the sounds ch and sh. Focus on what you are doing in your mouth to produce those sounds. Ch, sh, ch, sh. You should notice that your mouth, teeth, and tongue are in the same position when producing these sounds. The only difference is the airflow. When you produce the ch sound, like in the word chair, the airflow is quickly cut off. Repeat after me. Ch, 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 chair. When you produce the sh, sound, like in the word shrimp, the airflow can be continuous. In other words, you can stretch out the sound. Repeat after me. Shh. 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 Shrimp. Because both sounds are produced similarly in your mouth, they can sometimes be a little confusing, so make sure that you're focusing on the airflow in your mouth. Let's do another round. I will say a few words. Repeat the words after I say them. If you hear the ch sound at the beginning of the word, give a thumbs up. If you hear the ch sound at the end of the word, give a thumbs down. 
and if you do not hear the ch sound, cross your fingers to make an X. The first word is match. Match. You should have given a thumbs down. You hear the ch sound at the end of the word match. The next word is chicken. Chicken. You should have given a thumbs up. You hear the ch sound at the beginning of the word chicken. Our last word is ship. Ship. You should have crossed your fingers because you do not hear the ch sound in the word ship. You may remember that earlier I shared that the ch sound can be represented by the letters CH or TCH. But how do you know when to spell a word with CH or with TCH? The easiest way to know is to learn the rule for when to use TCH. Take a look at the words below. Pitch, witch, catch, fetch. What are some things you notice that the words have in common? If you said that the TCH always comes at the end of the word, you got it. You will only use the TCH spelling at the end of a one syllable word. You may have also noticed that the vowel sound in the syllable is the short vowel sound. You will only use the TCH spelling at the end of a one syllable word if the vowel is right before the ch sound and the vowel makes the short vowel sound. For example, in the word pitch, we hear the short vowel sound I, and that short vowel I comes right before the ch sound in the word pitch. So therefore, it is spelled with the TCH ending. If the ch sound comes at the beginning of the word or syllable, then you use the CH spelling. You will also use the CH spelling at the end of a one syllable word if the vowel right before the ch makes the long vowel sound, or if there is a consonant between the ch sound in the word. For example, in the word peach, we hear the long vowel sound e before that ch sound. Because we hear that long vowel sound, we spell the ch sound with ch. Another example is in the word bench. Even though we hear the short e eh sound, the sound that comes right before the ch is n, which is a consonant sound. Anytime there is a consonant just before that ch sound, you are going to spell it with the ch spelling. Here are a few examples of words that follow the spelling rules we learned in today's lesson. Match. Chip. Drench. You may now go to the try it section and then the show what you know section of the lesson. Vowel teams. Vowel sounds can be spelled in different ways and vowel letters can stand for more than one sound. Today, you will be learning about vowel teams. Vowel teams are when two vowels are together in a word but only represent one sound.
long A vowel teens. First, we will explore the vowel teens A, I, and A, Y. These vowel team spellings can stand for the long A vowel sound in words like train and play. Remember, the long A vowel sound says the letter's name, A. Long vowel sounds are interesting because it often takes more than one letter to spell them. Let's read some words that contain the vowel teams A, I, and A, Y. You will notice that the vowel teams are on red tiles, just like the other vowels. You will also notice that both vowels are only on one tile because the vowel team only makes one sound. Repeat the words after me. Brain. B, r, a, n. Brain. Chain. Ch, a, n. Chain. Waste. W, a, s, t. Waste. These words all contain the vowel team a, i. Repeat the words after me. Stay. S, t, a, stay. Spray. S, p, r, a, spray. Clay. A. Clay. These words all contain the vowel team A, Y. What do you notice about where the vowel team A, I is found in the word versus where the vowel team A, Y is found in the word? You should have noticed that the A, I spelling for the long A is usually found in the middle of a word or syllable, and the A-Y spelling for long A is usually found at the end of a word or syllable. Long O vowel teams. Now we will explore the vowel teams O-A and O-W. These vowel team spellings can stand for the long O vowel sound in words like soap, and snow. Remember, the long O vowel sound says the letter's name, O. Let's read some words that contain the vowel teams OA and OW. Repeat the words after me. Coach. K -O -ch. Coach. Toast. O, S, T, toast. These words contain the vowel team O, A. Repeat the words after me. Groan, G, R, O, N, groan. Shown, Sh, O, Mm, shown. Glow. G, U, O, glow. These words contain the vowel team O, W. O consonant E is the most common spelling for the long O sound in the middle of a word, but O, A isn't far behind. O-W is the most common way to spell the long O sound at the end of words. In many cases, more than one spelling option can be the correct way to spell a word. That's because those words have two different meanings. We call these words homophones. Homophones sound the same but are spelled differently. For example, the word toe. Toe can be spelled T-O-W. When spelled this way, tow means for one vehicle to move another vehicle to a different location. Tow can also be spelled T-O-E. However, when it's spelled this way with the O-E vowel team, it means the toe on your foot. 
when there is more than one way to correctly spell a word. The best way to know the correct spelling is to build your knowledge of many different vocabulary words and to use a dictionary or spell checker to confirm that you have the correct spelling for the word you are trying to spell. Long E vowel teams. Next, we will explore the vowel teams E, A, E, E, and I, E. These vowel team spellings can stand for the long E vowel sound in words like team, feet, and shield. Remember, the long E vowel sound says the letter's name, E. Repeat the words after me. Beach, B, E, Ch, Beach. Speak. E -k speak. These words contain the vowel team E A. Repeat the words after me. Free. E free. Teen. T e n teen. These words contain the vowel team E, E. Repeat the last round of words after me. Thief. Th e, th thief. Brief. B, r, e, th brief. These words contain the vowel team IE. At the end of a word with more than one syllable, our spelling options for the long E vowel sound of E are Y, EY, and EE. The EE is a very uncommon option. Let's take a look at the word above. The word will be weep. Woo, e, Weep means to cry or shed tears. What would our spelling options be to create the long E vowel sound within this word? Think about it. Our spelling options would be W-E-P-E, -E, the E consonant silent E, W-E-E-P, the double E vowel team, and W-E-A-P, the E-A vowel team. Neither E-Y nor Y would work in this word because the E sound is not at the end of a multisyllabic word. An E by itself would not be the spelling option because it is not an open syllable. If spelled W-E-P, then the word would be pronounced WEP with the short E vowel sound, eh. Now that you know that your spelling options would be W-E-P-E, W-E-E-P, and W-E-A-P, you would need to determine which of those spellings is actually correct if you didn't already know how to properly spell that word. You can do this by looking in a dictionary or an electronic spell checker. The correct spelling of this word is with the E-E -E vowel team, weep. Diphthongs, O-I and O-Y. Today, we will see how the letters O-I and O-Y can stand for the OI sound. The oi sound is a gliding sound, also known as a diphthong. In a diphthong, your mouth changes position as you pronounce the sound. Let's learn about combinations of letters that can stand for the sound oi. Notice the letters oi and oy in the following words. 
Pay attention to your mouth as you pronounce the vowel sound that is produced when these letters are together. Oi. Oi. The first word is coin. K oi n coin. The second word is toy. T oi toy. Even though there are two letters, they only represent one sound. When producing the oi sound, you will notice that your mouth starts with your lips pursed and rounded with your tongue pulled to the back. Then you glide to having your lips move into a wide and smiling position while your tongue moves to the bottom of your mouth and sits behind your bottom row of teeth. Coin, toy, oi. Let's practice reading words with the oi sound spelled O-Y. Try reading this first word. If you read the word as boy, you are correct. Try reading this next word. If you said enjoy, you are correct. Now, let's practice reading words with the oi sound spelled O-I. Try reading this first word. If you said oil, you are correct. Try reading this next word. If you said point, you are correct. But how do you know which spelling to use, O-I or O-Y? The O-I spelling for oi comes at the beginning or middle of a word or syllable. You will notice this in the words oil and point. The O-Y spelling for oi comes at the end of a word or syllable. You will notice this in the word boy, and enjoy. Diphthongs, O-U and O-W. In this lesson, we will see how the letters O-U and O-W can stand for the owl sound. The owl sound is a gliding sound also known as a diphthong. Remember, when pronouncing a diphthong, your mouth changes position as you pronounce the sound. Let's learn about combinations of letters that can stand for the sound OW. Notice the letters OU and OW in the following words. Pay attention to your mouth as you pronounce the vowel sound that is produced when these two letters are together. OW. Even though there are two letters, they only represent one sound. The first word is couch, k -ow -ch, couch. The second word is cow, k -ow cow. When producing the ow sound, you will notice that your mouth starts with your lips widely opened with your tongue pulled to the bottom of your mouth. Your jaw is dropped. Then, you glide to having your lips positioned in a more pursed and rounded position. Couch, cow, owl. Let's practice reading words with the owl sound spelled O-U. Try reading this first word. If you said mouth, you are correct. Now try the second word. If you said, ouch, you are correct. Now let's practice reading words with the ow sound spelled O-W. Try reading this first word. If you said, owl, 
You are correct. Now try reading this next word. If you said clown, you are correct. But how do you know which spelling to use? O-U or O-W? Both the O-U and O-W spellings for owl can come at the beginning or middle of a word or syllable. However, the O-U spelling is more commonly used. The O-W spelling for owl comes at the end of a word or syllable, such as in the words bow and power. You may now go to the try it section and then the show what you know section of the lesson.